know one thing about me, it's that I love books and I love Taylor Swift and this is just the perfect combination because today I'm going to be giving you book recs based on every single song from Taylor Swift's anthology. Please make sure to hit the like button and also if you want to see more content from me, make sure that you're subscribed. Let's get into it. If you have amazing taste and your favorite song is The Black Dog, I think you will absolutely adore People Who Meet On Vacation by Emily Henry Now. I know each and every one of you are probably gasping at your screen right now being like, shouldn't this be funny story by Emily Henry? That book also works for this song, but I think that book actually works better on a different song later on in this video. So I stand by People Who Meet On Vacation. This is a little bit of a happier version to The Black Dog because The Black Dog is a relationship that's completely over. In People Who Meet On Vacation, we are following a friendship that is on the rocks like very much so they haven't spoken in i think like two years give or take and something happened to ruin their friendship we don't really know what as a reader but you slowly start to see what happened to them we were following alex and poppy they were literally best friends did every single thing together and they always took vacations with one another until a thing happened here are some of the lyrics that remind me of people we meet on vacation i am someone who until recent you shared all your secrets with I move through the world with a heart broken, my longings stay unspoken, and I may never open up the way I did to you. Our main male character, Alex, is so standoffish. He does not really talk to anybody whatsoever. And somehow Poppy had got him to open up and feel comfortable enough to share all his deepest, darkest secrets. And they both have that fear of, if we're no longer in each other's lives, will I have someone who I can confide in going forward? This book is amazing. I know some people really don't like it and it's not my favorite Emily Henry book, but it's, it's top three for me. And I ended up again, a happier version to the black dog. My favorite song is I'm Gonna Get You Back. You need to read Powerless by Lauren Roberts. This book is literally The Hunger Games set in a kingdom. They have powers and then you just throw in an angsty banter filled romance, but also they hate each other. Here are the lyrics. Whether I'm gonna be your wife or gonna smash up your bike, I haven't decided yet, but I'm gonna get you back. Whether I'm gonna curse you out or take you back to my house, haven't decided yet, but I'm gonna get you back. Our main characters in here have not decided whether they're gonna be enemies or they're gonna be lovers. But there is tension and you can feel it and it is palpable and it is amazing. Your song is the Albatross, you need to read the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas. Literally every single female character in this book is the Albatross. This series is just feminine rage in a nutshell. And it's so good. I literally can't tell y'all anything about this series because spoilers, so here's the most vague synopsis you will ever hear in your life. The first book we are following an assassin by the name Selena. We learn that the king is holding this competition where he wants to find his personal assassin. So Selena is taken to the kingdom to try and win so that she can just have a better life for herself. We get to see the political intrigue. We get to see who actually is her friend, who is her foe. And the story just expands from there in the best way possible. Here are the lyrics. Wise men once said one bad seed kills the garden. One less temptress, one less dagger to sharpen. Locked me up in towers, but I'd visit you in your dreams. They tried to warn you about me. You're kidding. You are kidding. You're telling me that Taylor Swift doesn't read Sarah J Maas because that is every single female character in this book. Every single one of them. And I stand by that. If your favorite song is Chloe or Sam or Sophia or Marcus, you are wanting to cry. You are wanting to sob your eyes out and I got you. You need to read the Boys of Tommen series as a whole, but specifically Redeeming Six and Saving Six. This is Joey and Aoife's story and it hurts. It hurts and I was sobbing and I was not okay. Joey has a horrible home life and he essentially is the person that all his siblings can turn to and rely on and that pressure is just so much for a child to endure Aoife is one of his closest friends slash someone who he'd like to be more with, but the cards are not in their favor. And so they do just stay friends for the most part. Here are the lyrics that remind me so much of Joey and Aoife's story. I'm going to read the lyrics off for y'all because this is like literally a whole verse. My memory ain't that good. Said some things that I can't unabsorb. You turned me into an idea of sorts. You needed me, but you needed drugs more. And I couldn't watch it happen. I changed into goddesses, villains, and fools. Change plans and lovers and outfits and rules, all to outrun my desertion of you, and you just watched it. This song is just reminds me of Aoife's point of view. And it hurts! It hurts so much! You will binge read this series, but please make sure that you are fully stocked in tissues. If your favorite song is How Did It End, you need to read the Magnolia Parks universe. 
if you haven't read this series yet, what are you doing with your life? What are you doing right now? You need to jump on that bandwagon ASAP. This series is so toxic, but it is essentially Gossip Girl set in high society London. Again, following a toxic, toxic, toxic relationship that you're not gonna be able to stop reading about. You will be binge reading the series and you will become so consumed by this tumultuous love story and in every single one of the stories within this friendship group. Here are the lyrics that remind me so much of this book. Come one, come all, it's happening again. The empathetic hunger descends. We'll tell no one except all of our friends. We must know. How did it end? This story, since they are set in high society London, everyone is obsessed with these characters. They literally want to know every single thing that is going on in their lives. Their names are running through the rumor mill all the time. And at the end of the day, the only ones that are going to know exactly what happened to Magnolia and BJ are the people in their friend group. Even the things that Magnolia might not know, the friend group will know. Some of the things that Beach might not know, the friend group will know. How did it end? Yes, Magnolia Parks. For this next song, I have seen everyone and their mother recommend YA books, which I completely understand. But in my opinion, I think that this song is giving you the feeling of young love and you are well into your adulthood and you are just now getting those butterflies again and you are falling in love and it feels like it's the first time. And so if your favorite song is So High School, you will love The Fake Out by Stephanie Archer. Our main character, Rory, has been in love with Hazel his whole life. They knew each other in high school. She was his tutor, but she had a boyfriend at the time. She had a boyfriend at the time who treated her so horribly. Flash forward several years into the future. He is now a professional hockey player. She, I believe, does physical therapy for the team or something along those lines. Her ex-boyfriend gets offered a position on the team. He takes it. It's a horrible run-in with him where he essentially tells her that she is needy and that she is still after him, yada, yada, yada. And to get him off of her back, she goes, actually, no, I have a boyfriend. I'm dating Rory. You remember Rory from high school? And so it's a fake dating romance that is so good. You know how to ball. I know Aristotle. That is them. She was his tutor. That is them. And she is just now learning through this fake dating scenario, like what love should truly feel like, what the butterflies should feel like. And it is one of the best hockey romances to ever exist. And not enough people are talking about it. If your favorite song is I Hate It Here, I think you will absolutely love The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. This book was one of my favorites of last year. We're calling Clementine, who is currently in the grieving process. Her aunt just passed away and her aunt left her her old apartment. As long as Clementine can remember, her aunt has told her that this apartment is magical and amazing things happen in here. No one in the family really thought much about this, but as Clementine is going to visit the apartment and kind of finish packing up a few of the final things that she has in there, she meets this man who claims that he's the new tenant of this apartment. And as they get talking, Clementine realizes that this man is actually from seven years ago in the past. As soon as Clementine leaves this apartment, that man is completely gone. But when she sets foot in it again, she's back seven years in the past. She's literally head over heels in love with him the second she sees him, but she realizes like, he's from seven years ago and he doesn't realize that he's not in present day. So every time she hates everything that's going on in her life, she goes to this magical apartment and sees him. Such a cool premise. Here are the lyrics that really remind me of this book. I hate it here, so I will go to the secret gardens in my mind. People need a key to get to, the only one is mine. She was the only one that is able to enter this apartment and kind of understand what is going on because as soon as she tells anybody, they all think that she is crazy. This is such a unique story and it is beautiful in the way that Ashley Poston talks about grief. Chef's kiss, literally chef's kiss. Oh, and did I mention that we end up meeting the man in present time? Did I mention that? Because that is a whirlwind of an experience in this book. Highly recommend. If your favorite song is Thank You, Amy, I think you will absolutely adore it. Off From a Gentleman by Julia Quinn. This is the third book in the Bridgerton series. Well, you already know that I've gone in depth on it. Here's a little quick rundown. We are following Sophie Beckett and she is basically living out the Cinderella story. She has a horrible stepmother and horrible stepsisters. She ends up sneaking into the masquerade ball. No one knows who she is and she falls in love with Benedict Bridgerton. She runs away when the clock strikes midnight. Benedict has no clue who she is and he spends the next honestly like two to three years searching for her. The reason this reminds me of Thank You Amy is because her stepmother is horrible and is essentially the Amy character of this tale. Here are the lyrics. And it wasn't a fair fight or a clean kill each time that Amy stomped across my grave. And then she wrote headlines in the local paper laughing at each baby step I take. 
and it was always the same searing pain. But I prayed that one day I could say, all that time you were throwing punches, I was building something and I couldn't wait to show you it was real. That is all Sophie is after is to show this woman like, hey, you treated me horribly, but look at where I'm at now. And that is this song. That is the song in a nutshell. Also, we love Benedict Bridgerton. He is superior. Let's go on to the next track. If your favorite song is I Look in People's Windows, I think you absolutely adore Whispers of You by Catherine Callis. This is the first book in the Lost and Found series. Completely underrated. Everyone needs to check it out. This is a second chance romance that has a lot of layers to it. Our main couple in here, when they were originally together, went through a very traumatic event. A very, very traumatic event. And honestly, this made them kind of go in opposite directions. He ran as far away as he possibly could from this town. Eventually he makes his way back here. And as soon as he's back into the town, he cannot stay away from her. They are drawn together like magnets. Even at a distance, he is always keeping an eye on her and her well-being to make sure that she is okay. Y'all know anything about me? It is that I am a sucker for second chance romance and I ate this one up. I ate it up. Here are the lyrics. I look in people's windows in case you're at their table. What if your eyes looked up and met mine? one more time. Is that not just screaming second chance romance to you? It's screaming it to me. That is for sure. Does it feel all right to not know me? I'm addicted to the if only. So I look in people's windows like I'm a deranged weirdo. I attend Christmas parties from outside. I look in people's windows. In case you're at their table, what if your eyes looked up and met mine one more time? <sighs> so good. Y'all will adore this book. I literally binge read this series in like a week and a half. If you're in a slump, this is the series for you. If your favorite song is The Prophecy, you will love Funny Story by Emily Henry. I told y'all that I had a place for this book and it is right here. This is the ultimate, not people pleasing song, but people pleasing to just try and feel loved and for some reason everybody leaves song. That is what it feels like. Like you give your all to every single person and you get nothing back. And that is our main character, Daphne and funny story. So hold on for a second while I go through this plot because it's a whirlwind of a plot. We are following Daphne. Her and Peter are engaged. Peter has this childhood friend named Petra. They have been best friends for literally forever. He tells Daphne like, hey, even though Petra and I are close, you have nothing to worry about at all. Peter goes to his bachelor party and he comes back to tell Daphne, hey, Petra and I are going to be together now. I'm calling off our wedding. He also essentially tells Daphne like, I'll leave for a few days so you can get out of our house. Leaving Daphne with nowhere to go. Let's pan into Petra's relationship because she had one before her and Peter got together as well. Petra is dating this man named Miles and Miles had an apartment and when Petra cheated on him to get back with Peter, Miles had needs a roommate. So who better to live with Miles than Daphne? So Daphne and Miles, they are now roommates. They honestly are not doing too hot. They are both very equally sad. Until one day, Daphne receives an invitation for Peter and Petra's wedding. And Daphne's like, okay, well, you know what? I'm not showing up unattended because Miles and I are dating. We're dating. That's what she announces. And so it's a fake dating little story. And Daphne has always felt like she is the second choice in her whole life. And that is the prophecy. It is the prophecy. Here are the lyrics. I've been on my knees. Change the prophecy. Don't want money. Just someone who wants my company. Let it once be me. Who do I have to speak to about if they can redo the prophecy? I'm so afraid I sealed my fate. No sign of soulmates. I'm just a paperweight in shades of grayish. Spending my last coin so someone will tell me it'll be okay. This book is phenomenal and it is Emily Henry's best work. I've said what I've said. Please go read this one because Daphne is my soul character and I love her to death. If your favorite song is Cassandra, you need to read Midnight's the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. Y'all, this is the weirdest book I've ever read in my life, but like I ate it up. It was so good. It is essentially Twilight meets Where the Crawdads Sing meets Bonnie and Clyde meets psychological thriller. I said what I said. It is crazy. It has a lot of trigger warnings to it. So please make sure that you look those up before you hop into this book. But it's a wild ride. I have never read anything like this a day in my dang life. It's so crazy. Let me give you some lyrics because this book is unhinged and it matches up with Cassandra so well. So well. They knew, they knew the whole time that I was onto something. The family, the pure greed, the Christian chorus line, they all said nothing. Blood's thick, but nothing like a payroll. Bet they never spared a prayer for my soul. You can mark my words that I said at first. In a morning warning, no one heard. If you've read this book, 
you know. If you know, you know. And it just works so well. I also think Ashley Winstead's other book, The Last Housewife, works very well for Cassandra too. I definitely would check that one out. I love Ashley Winstead. We'll read anything she ever writes. If your favorite song is Peter, I think you will really enjoy Never by Jessa Hastings. I feel like this is definitely a give me because this is a little bit of a twist on the classic Peter Pan story, as is the song Peter. It is alluding to Peter Pan, obviously. This book is a hit or a miss for everyone so it could work for you it might not work for you it is toxic but it's by jessa hastings this is the author of magnolia parks universe and those books are also toxic as all get out so make sure you're aware of that going in we're following our main girl daphne and she always knew that one day peter pan would come for her he came for her grandma and her mom and so her whole life she's been being prepped for this she's so excited to go to neverland and meet peter but he is not who she expected at all she also meets other people while she is here and has very intriguing experiences we'll say it that way it makes very interesting choices we'll word it like that there is a little bit of a love triangle in here and again interesting choices were made it's either gonna be a hit or miss for you it worked for me but it wasn't my favorite thing in the world like a 3.75 four star rating. It was okay. Here are the lyrics for you so y'all can see where I'm coming from. Forgive me Peter, my lost fearless leader in closets like cedar preserved from when we were kids. Is it something I did? The goddess of timing once found us beguiling. She said she was trying. Peter, was she lying? And I won't confess that I waited, but I let the lamp burn. As the men masqueraded, I hoped you returned. With your feet on the ground, tell me all that you'd learned, cause love's never lost when perspective is earned. You said you'd come and get me, but you were 25 and the shelf life of those fantasies had expired. Lost to the Lost Boys chapter of your life. Forgive me, Peter, please know that I tried. It is this book. It really is this book because her relationship with Peter in this song is alluding to a toxic one. This one is also toxic. Yes. Also, look how stunning this cover is. She's a beaut. Say what you will about the book, but she's a beaut. Next, we have The Bolter, which I love this song so much. And technically, I have like three wrecks for y'all. We're going to start off with Little Women. I know y'all already know what that one is about, but like, tell me Amy March is not The Bolter coding. Like, that is Amy. That's not my official wreck. But just make that connection because I love it. I love it so much. I have two wrecks for you after that though that are the official ones. Here we go. The first book I have for you, if you love the bolter, is Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage. Loved this thing. This book is just Black Cat Golden Retriever vibes for the win. We are following Ada Hart and she is traveling to the small town Meadowlark because she has a job to do. She's working on a house. When she gets there, it's pretty late, so she stops at a bar for dinner. She sees this really cute guy and she is currently going through a divorce. Her ex was horrible to her and so she's thinking, I'm gonna have a nice night. I'm gonna have a fun time tonight. They talk a little more than talk i would say in the hallway of this bar for a little bit and then it gets interrupted she leaves very abruptly leaves her bag with him she shows up to this project site the next day she starts apologizing for not having her bag and then she immediately notices that this guy is the very same guy she was making out with last night and that is wes we love Wes so much. She's not wanting to stay stagnant or be in the same place for too long. She is not wanting to lay down any roots whatsoever. She's wanting to finish the job and leave or bolt, if you will. And Wes is trying to show her like life can be completely different if you would just give me a chance, give us a chance. And again, black cat, golden retriever, cowboy romance, amazing. Book three comes out in November. I'm excited. Here are some lyrics before we get into the next book. Started with a kiss. Oh, we must stop meeting like this, but it always ends up with a town car speeding out the drive one evening. But as she was leaving, it felt like breathing. Okay, so the first part is a little bit alluding to her relationship with Wes, but then the last part of that verse reminds me a lot of her toxic relationship. She's the Bolter. My second book rec for the Bolter is Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez. Y'all know I love Abby Jimenez. I've read three books by her and somehow every single one of them was a five out of five. I don't know how she did it, but she is amazing in this book is so good 
Oh my gosh, it's a very interesting premise, so kind of bear with me a little bit. We are following Justin and Emma. They meet over a Reddit thread. It is the Am I the Jerk thread. Emma is reading this thread and she learns that Justin is someone where as soon as he dates them and breaks up, that person will immediately find the love of their life and get married. Emma is out here thinking to herself, I'm the same way. That is exactly what happens to me. She messages him. They're talking for a little bit, going through some of their relationship horror stories that they've experienced with one another. And Justin gets the idea, hey, if every time you date someone, that person finds the love of their life. And every time I date someone, they find the love of their life. What if we date each other? Then once we break up, we will have our soulmate. Emma's thinking to herself, oh my gosh, this is amazing. They set some ground rules. Emma is a traveling nurse, so she really doesn't have any roots or ties anywhere, which is how she's able to travel to where Justin is at and try out this little experiment of sorts. And throughout this book, you just get to learn so much about Emma and you see that she is the bolter. She is always on the move and never staying in the same spot. And that is because of how she was raised. It talks about attachment style. So if that is something that you are very interested in, I definitely would recommend this. Here are the lyrics from the Bolter that remind me of Just for the Summer. When it's all roses, portrait poses, Central Park Lake and tiny rowboats. What a charming Saturday. That's when she sees the littlest leaks down in the floorboards and she knows she must bolt. When Emma senses that something is going awry or she gets the feeling that people might not want her there, she is immediately gone. She does not communicate in any way whatsoever. And she's like, I can't be here. Clearly I am unwanted. And so this is a big reason as why she never lays down any ties and why this book focuses on attachment styles. I won't say anymore because of spoilers, but just know I love this book. Five out of five. Both books for the bolter. Five out of five. So good. The last two songs of this album were honestly really hard for me to find recommendations for. So a little bit of a stretch, but I think they still work. If y'all have any recommendations for these, let me know down below slash let me know if you think that these work or not. I'm curious. But first we have The Robin. I have two books for this one. I have two different takes. Also the first one, I'm talking about a series, so I'm going to be very vague. So let's get into it. If your favorite song is Robin, I think you will really like the Cruel Prince series by Holly Black. Again, I can't really tell you anything about this because it is a series. It is so good. We are following Jude and I believe that Jude is Robin. This is, is her. She has this not childlike curiosity, but the world that she's in kind of brings that up. She's very different from everyone around her. This honestly makes her have a lot of enemies in this world. And that's all I'm gonna say. No spoilers. I honestly recommend going in blind to this book because it's so good. I listened to the first two on audio and it was so unbelievably worth it. I'm not gonna tell you all the lyric until I give you the next book because the lyrics work for both of these. But here's my second take on Robin. For some reason, when I was first listening to Robin, I kind of saw parallels to you're on your own kid and how we have this childlike curiosity and eventually we are forced to grow up a little too fast. I don't know why I felt that way, but I did. And it made me think of Hot House Flower by Krista and Becca Ritchie. This is the second book in the Calloway Sister series, but they're also interconnected with the Addicted series. There's a whole reading order for that. If you want to explain, let me know. I'll answer y'all in the comments. This one is following Daisy. And Daisy is the youngest of the Calloway sisters and she never really got a childhood. She was always treated like an adult from the get-go. And honestly, she was very much left to figure out the world by herself. And it's a struggle. It is a struggle. And so here are the lyrics I think work for this one and The Cruel Prince. Again, this is a different interpretation on Robin. And I just get that. I just get that draw to you're on your own kid and never grow up. I just... I get that little parallel when I listen to it. And that's why this one is here. Here are some lyrics. You got the dragonflies above your bed. You have a favorite spot on the swing set. You have no room in your dreams for regrets. The time will arrive for the cruel and the mean. You'll learn to bounce back just like your trampoline, but now we'll curtail your curiosity and sweetness. Again, Daisy had to grow up so extremely fast. In order for her to live out her dreams slash the dreams her parents have for her, there's no room in there for regrets. I think it works. Let me know if you think this one works or if it's a stretch. I'm curious about your thoughts. Finally, we have the manuscript. And if this is your favorite song, I think you would really enjoy You With A View by Jessica Joyce. Now this one doesn't really involve the process of a manuscript, but it does focus on letters and learning more about your loved ones after they had passed. Our main character, Noelle, was really close to her grandmother. Her grandmother ends up passing. And while Noelle is going through her grandmother's things, she comes across all of these letters written to her grandmother from her grandmother. And one of them is saying, I hope that we will elope soon. 
And Noelle looks at the bottom and she realizes this was not signed by her grandfather. It was signed by a different man. Noelle had no clue that her grandma was in love with somebody else and to the point of almost running away and marrying them. Noelle is determined to find this man and just feel closer to her grandmother while she is going through the grieving process. This book is literally amazing. I will not be stopped until everyone has read this book and his letters to Juliet mixed with beach read, also mixed with Marjorie and it is immaculate. It is so good. Here are some lyrics for you. Looking backwards might be the only way to move forward. And this one is more directed towards Noelle because she is going through the grieving process. Being able to go through her grandmother's things and learning more about her grandmother's past is the only way that Noelle believes that she will make it through this horrible process. The only thing that's left is the manuscript. One last souvenir from my trip to your shores. Now and then I reread the manuscript, but the story isn't mine anymore. I love this book so much. Please go read it. Please, please, please. That is all I have for today's video. Thank you all so much for being here. I absolutely love these videos so much. If you have another album or artist y'all want me to give you book recs for, let me know down below. But I'll see y'all next time. Thank you so much for being here.